Hey, Jesse. How's it going? What's up? What's, What's up? up? Low heat. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Having a good time? All right. We're going to we're gonna be sitting a little farther back because I All got right. Peter here as well. Uh, Hugs <laughs> in cyberspace. Hey, Hi, Peter. How's it going? Good to see you. I can almost see you back there. Yeah. <laughs> right. Nice. Like your shirt. Thank you. Thank you. Or I don't know, maybe Peter's shirt as well. It's also a good one. Are you wearing a Mantis shirt, Logan? I'm not. I actually, uh, mine's in the washing, actually. We'll send you one. What a crime. <laughs> not bad. I, I would think that would be like his only attire. You yeah, know, you think, only right? Mantis I, got, I have to switch it up, though. I can't be too predictable. <laughs> right. Yeah, I guess that's true. So uh, let's see, was it 202? Yeah, we can get started. Oh, what's up, Tristan? Tristan's on as well. So is Arthropod Ambassadors. What's up, Aaron? Thank All right. Guys. Well, uh, why don't we start out with you? Uh, go ahead and give us a little introduction of who you are, what you do, and uh, why have all bugs mantids, right? Yeah. Um, so I'm a recent graduate from UC Davis. I graduated last year. Um, most of my life I've been interested in insects, but mantises have always held a special spot. In my heart, I think partially because they're very um, well. They may, they seem intelligent <laughs> for insects. Um, they're quite aware of their surroundings, and they're much more interactive, I think, than a lot of other insects are. Like they'll more easily have like a much un more understandable response to to your interaction with them versus like a beetle might just kind of just like keep fawning along and <laughs> not give you as much like back. Um, that aside, I got more into them in a scientific sense, like in the last couple of years. So I'm mo mostly right now, I'm interested in prey capture strategy and phylogeography. So for people that don't know what that is, so prey capture strategy is how mantises catch their prey, right? So that can be anything from camouflage to the spination they have on their forelimbs, which they use to like capture certain types of prey or um, things like that. And then phylogeography is how geological events have influenced and like created speciation in different groups of mantises. So, yeah, that's mostly what I'm interested in right now. Now, when you say ge uh, geological events, what do you mean mm -hmm. by that? So, like, the shifting of the tectonic plates or, like, splitting of land masses, like, um, from Pangaea to, you know, the way the continents are currently. So, that's right. uh, any time that a land mass, remove, like, gets moved or attaches to a new land mass, you have, like, an influx of new flora and fauna. So, yeah. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. You said you graduated. Um, I was turning the volume up on the camera there. I might have missed yeah. what you said. What are you? Oh doing? yeah, I, I, I graduated from UC Davis last year um, with a bachelor's in entomology, and so I'm applying to grad school, okay. hoping to get in this year. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, good luck. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You want you in there? <laughs> we You're do. A mantis I guy. want you in there too. <laughs> yeah. That's that the science mantis to guru. <laughs> <laughs> Right on. Well, uh, I mean, I guess uh, maybe some viewers on here don't really know what a mantis a mantis is. I mean, they mm -hmm. look like an alien, but they're not. So what <laughs> is the mantis exactly? Yeah, so mantises are any of the 2,500 or so known species of um, predatory uh, invertebrates that have reptorial forelimbs. That's one of their diagnostic characters. Um, in addition to that, they have several others, like generally triangular head, um, the three body segments that insects always have. They also have a uh, uh, different vein on their forewing that is unique and diagnostic to the order. Um, so yeah, they're, but mostly mantises are known by the triangular head and, and raptorial forelimbs. So raptorial forelimbs for insects is anything that's used to capture insects. Um, and those can be in a variety of different shapes, but mantises tend to have large spines on them. Um, and that's like something that most other groups of insects that have raptorial forelimbs don't have. So, yeah. If, you know, here's here, Peter, if you can describe a mantis, uh, without ever seeing one before and knowing what it is, how would you describe a mantis? How well, would... they're called praying mantises. Uh, yes. <laughs> and so it's sort of baked into the name there. They, they, they have their arms up in front there. Um, but of course, uh, they don't, they don't behave like saints when it comes to their prey. No, <laughs> right. <laughs> no, so you wouldn't want to be a smaller bug around a mantis. That is, Definitely or even not. a larger bug. <laughs> I don't even think you'd want to be a larger bug around a mantis. Most of the time. Lots of viral videos about <laughs> mantises sitting on hummingbird feeders. Feast yeah, I think you're only day. really safe if you're human size and the mantis is mantis sized. I think, I think otherwise <laughs> you're. You're at some risk. <laughs> if that was the other way around, I feel like we'd all we'd all be like fearing going into the jungle <laughs> a little bit more. <laughs> just like, 
We aren't going anywhere. <laughs> Can everybody hear us okay here? We're sitting a bit far back from the camera. I'm just I'm just curious about that, if anybody could comment on that. You guys sound fine to me, but I don't know how it is. Okay, good, good. Right. A hummingbird, yep, yep. Mansions do go after freaking birds. Wasn't that on uh, uh, Z Frank, his mantis line? It recurs all the time. Yeah. <laughs> that there's there's new and new instances of it showing up on social media all the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, right. All yeah, right, I think, well, uh, huh? Oh, no, yeah, I was going to say, I think um, something that is not really like well looked into is actually like vertebrate predation by insects. And I think it happens a lot more in the tropics, I think, than we'd expect because a lot of the predators tend to be larger. There's a lot of small frogs and lizards and stuff in, in the rainforest habitats. So it might happen a lot more than we think. We just don't see it. So Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, especially in the Amazon or something like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jeez, who knows? I mean, that could be within bugs in general. Like, I'm sure there's many carnivorous beetles that chow down on small snakes and frogs and lizards and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Even... You know, I mean, yeah, I know carabids are vicious. Too. Carabids are so vicious. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Oh, carabids. Yeah. Oh, man. Even like the snail, you know, the scaphinotus, the snail eaters, man, those things. A slug's a pretty easy target, though. Oh, yeah, but try eating one. <laughs> <laughs> try chewing on one of those things. Good luck. <laughs> you know? uh, well, anyways, uh, so you have, you raise mantids, correct? You have yes, all kinds? Yeah. Well, why, don't you sh why don't you show us some of uh, the best mantids, some of the coolest? <laughs> Uh, the best. It's, it's hard to, hard to pick the best between things. Oh, yeah, he, is, he is a <laughs> All right, so let's start with a let's we'll start with the native species because I think this is something everyone will be familiar with. So this is a Stagmomantis limbata. Um, they're found throughout California, um, New Mexico, Arizona. They got up into the Midwest a little bit. Um, they're primarily they primarily prefer drier habitats. So uh, once you get into like the East Coast and where it gets like more humid, they kind of don't really, they can't really outcompete Stagmomantis Carolina. Um, but yeah, and then that's in the U.S. and they're, they're found all throughout Mexico and Honduras into parts of the drier parts of Central America. So, yeah. Yeah, we found some Stagmomantis, maybe not that species, no, we, but we, we did. We primarily found Limbata. Um, low heat mm -hmm. is one of the diagnostic features in that species. And I don't know if this is true for both males and females or not, but mm -hmm. uh, yellow banded underwings yeah, so they do have. Oh, God, she's uh, not happy with me grabbing her like that. I'm trying to show you. <laughs> Maybe we'll see those wings. <laughs> yeah, well, you can see That's her trying to, <laughs> <laughs> trying to see her trying to bite me as I'm trying to show the wings. But so yeah, uh, males and females they'll have the oh the females will have the yellow banded underwings. Um, they're tessellated, so that's this pattern. It's a tessellation, um, but in different color morphs, it can be a different color. So if you have like a darker colored individual, they can be orange, which is quite cool. Um, <laughs> still, <laughs> still doesn't want to let go. Um, the males have uh, clear wings in the back, but they have uh, they have some slight tessellation in some individuals. So, that, but they'll be black instead of yellow. Yeah. Right on. Um, but a diagnostic okay. character for these guys, which is an easy way to distinguish them from other stagmomantis species, is they have a blue labrum. So the labrum is the bottom segment of the of the head or like of the mouth. So it'd be like the triangular bit that like you see move up and down as they're eating. Um, let me see if, I don't know if I can show you because it might not zoom in well enough, but. Uh... Hey, while you're doing that, I'm gonna let up everyone that's in the live. I noticed some questions down there. Uh, we are gonna have a QA and a after we kind of discuss a lot of stuff. So save your questions for that time period okay. and we'll do our best to get to it. All so, right. Okay, you can see it right there actually, it's blue. Like it's not focusing that well, but you can see kind of the bluish color. Mm -hmm. She's yeah. really not happy, but. <laughs> um, if I lift it up again, you can kind of see the blue, like, like touch right, my head one more time, <laughs> right there. I don't know if you can see it that well, but it's Ooh. it's that bottom segment of the mouth. No like, humans were the harmed in the filming of this. Segment. <laughs> yeah, she, she's, she's, she's she's just grabbing onto me. I'm not actually holding her that. Or were they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's fine. Um, but yeah, so that's an easy way to distinguish them. So they'll have that blue, bright blue, color and. If you just see that, then you know it's Stagmomantis limbata. So, for the U.S. Stagmomantis, anyway. Stagmomantis limbata, Stagmomantis carolina, Stagmomantis grassalippis, and mm -hmm. I didn't even know this one existed until you told me after an Arizona trip. Stagmomantis, was it Wheeleri? Yeah, Wheeleri. Yeah, Wheeleri. Yeah, are yeah. are those the only four in the U.S.? There's Floridensis, but yeah, that's one. Oh, Floridensis. Florida. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did we find a Wheeleri? We. Uh, I know, did I ever send you any, Lohit? 
I don't on? recall. I don't think so. They're you still in my freezer with your name on them then. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think you said you got them from somebody else. With, yeah, uh, I, I, I did send them to adult you email, um, we'll but I, I, I and, and a mail. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, I collected a pair. Yeah, those those are those guys are probably my favorite because they have this like bright red color on the wings, and they have the three black bands on the abdomen, which is really cool. So, oh yeah. wow, I think I thought we did find one of those. We did. I'm pretty sure we definitely we, we, yeah, we definitely did. did. Yeah. yeah, I'm pretty sure we did. All right. Well, what else you got? All right. So next one, Parablepharus. So we're going to Asia now. I'll do the Asian species, I guess. So this is Parablepharus culei asiatica. So this is a pre-subadult female. Oh, man, it really doesn't focus that well, huh? Okay, let's do this. <laughs> but you can see, really cool. So they're deadly finicking, um, but mm -hmm. unlike something like Deropodis, right, which looks like like a full leaf, these guys will hang down and stretch their arms out, so they mimic like a gnarled or twisted leaf. Um, and they'll just hang on a branch like that. And so they don't really move all that much um, until prey comes by. But if you can see, they have, like, this bright orange color. They don't really throw it to play that easily. So getting them to show the color. You can kind of see the coloration, though, a little bit, maybe. Um, what family oh. of mantis? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. This what is mantis family are those So in? this is a member of the polymorphic stick and flower mantises from Asia. So... Like, so this would be in the same family that like orchid mantises or jeweled flower mantises are, or ghost mantises. They're all in Hymenopodidae, so. Okay. Yeah. Well, you, you had said uh, para, what did you say, parablef? Parablepharus, yeah. I, I would have thought it was uh, uh, with blepharopsis. Are those hymenopodids? Uh, those are empusids. I thought so. so. Yeah. So yeah. this, it's interesting that they named this one in a similar way, but it's in a different family. No, that is I, I think it got moved. Um, I'm not familiar with the taxonomical history, but I think initially when it was described, it was thought to be related to Blepharopsis because it has like kind of that similar crest uh -huh. that Blepharopsis has. I don't know if you can see it, Peter. How many are in this family? Um, in Hymenopodidae, I actually don't know. Um, I think it's... It's, it's well, over a hundred, well over a um, hundred. There's quite a few. Two hundred species. There's quite um, a few. Yeah, it's quite quite diverse. Yeah. So. Yeah, I've never heard of this species. Great to see it. Yeah, I have four pairs, so I'll let you know if I have an excess of nymphs. <laughs> Ooh, -hoo. I can I can send you a couple nice. or something. It's always nice. That's always a nice time. <laughs> Peter's favorite um, words. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I like seeing those DMs from Low Heat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I sometimes message Peter. I'm like, hey, Peter, I have a lot of this. Do you want it? <laughs> and I, I don't, has, has he ever said no? I doubtful. <laughs> <laughs> so this is uh, Rhombomantis uh, candy. It's not, it, oh, hold on. It's an undescribed species from South China. It's very skittish. Hold on, let me grab Describe, all right. Oh, gosh. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah. They're really skittish, but um, initially I thought this was tectiformis, but um, you can see oh, the coloration wow. a little bit right there. It's got like red and blue on the yeah, wow. Um I initially thought it was tectiformis, um, which is a closely rela related species, but tectiformis doesn't have blue on the inside of the four coxy like this one has. Um, so you can kind of see it better here as she's moving around. Gosh, that yeah. color is incredible. Yeah, and I thought the colors reminded me of cotton candy. So I was gonna say it looks like cotton candy. I was like, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, we're really thinking. I was that. literally gonna say it looks like cotton candy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just... Uh, yeah, these guys are great. Um, pretty easy to take care of. It's basically like Hyrodula or Rambadera or something. Um, pretty simple species, but really pretty. So yeah, they're quite cool. It's amazing. Everybody loves a shield mantis. Yep. Uh, can't go wrong. Can't go wrong with that. So what was it? What was the thing I said yesterday that, well, he hasn't brought the species out yet, but I'll bring it up later oh. when he brings it out. She just start displaying. Oh, there we go. Oh, wow. Yeah. Look at that. Oh, oh that. that's awesome. <laughs> yep. Oh, this is why really you like mantis so much. <laughs> yeah, this is why. Yeah, people sleep on the coloration. I think mantises are super pretty. Oh, it's insane. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. And I mean, and I mean, for me as as a person that does draws shapes and whatnot, their, their shape is just like nothing else. I mean, 
Yeah, you, you, you got as many options as you want, basically. <laughs> one leaf, we got a leaf, you know? Yeah. And even that <laughs> leaf looks like, like a stick, we got a stick. Five, <laughs> five billion different leaves, too. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, so this one, I'm going to see if she'll sit still, because they're really fast. They're like, I don't know if you guys have had Huntsman Spider before, but they're almost as fast. <laughs> Oh my gosh, they're really fast. I um, Actually, I had a Huntsman spider one time ever, oh, okay. and I opened the cage to put food in it, and it ran up my arm like <laughs> before I even could react to it. And I was like, oh my gosh, if I don't catch this, it's going to be gone. And then I tried to grab it, and it took off, and I never saw it again. And I was like, well, <laughs> that was my I actually, That almost happened with my Huntsman. <laughs> I actually lost her for a couple of days, and then I found yeah. her under my bed. <laughs> yeah, mine just, it was gone. <laughs> I've so this is, this is a uh, Kaleris. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> This is Caliris elegans. Um, it's a small mantis from Malaysia and, th and Thailand. Um, but you can see they're, they've got these really long, oh, well, maybe you can't see it. Let me get wow, a little yeah. bit. But uh, she's got these really long spines. And what they'll do is, I don't know if you guys have seen uh, ambush katydids from South America with those, with the, like the bug eyes and the really long spines. So it's similar to that. They'll lay flat on a leaf. And then when something lands, they, they use these long spines to like basket trap it. So, wow. And I wish I could show you the wings because they're really pretty. They're called umbrella mantises and by uh, breeders in Malaysia because they have these like bright pink wings. But she'll wow. probably just run away <laughs> if I try to try to bother her too much. But yeah, yeah let me... I love that name, umbrella mantis. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I've never heard that before. Yeah, these guys were a huge pain though because they're <laughs> so sensitive at first in star. Like they they have trouble even like catching melanogaster fruit flies and they stress really easily, so <laughs> we'll see how it goes. <laughs> All right. Well, if anyone here. can do it, I believe in you, Lohit. Uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> I believe in Lohit and a very old fruit fly culture with stunted fruit flies. <laughs> yes, <laughs> right. that'd be, yeah, that'd maybe right. spring tails. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be the way to go. Okay, so this one, Jesse, Jesse is probably going to have a field day if he tries to draw this one, but um, this one is Pseudocanthops lobipedes. She's playing dead right now, so I'm holding her like yep. this. But. This is the one I was talking about. So this one right here, it looks like an alien flew from outer space, landed somewhere in the jungle, was trying to like go, oh, I better camouflage myself, then got spooked and like stayed looking like that forever. They're so textured. It's, it's pretty crazy. Amazing. Um, they, is that an like, adult? This is an adult female. So yeah, mm -hmm. these are these are the wings actually right here. Mm-hmm. Wow, that is yeah. amazing! What a cryptic looking I know. insect, and that is definitely a bug I'll be drawing. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> you got to send me some good photos of those. I will for sure. Yeah, yeah. I can send you some after this, but yeah, they're really cool. So, so what do you think that's mimicking? Um, I think it's just supposed to be moss and lichen. Um, because with all the texturing going on, it seems like if it was moss, it would probably be all green. But I think it's lichen too, because it's got like black and white. Right, right. And other colors. So, yeah. One of these days we're going to be out in the jungle and there's going to be something that looks like a person standing in a tree and you realize it's going to be a human mimicking mantis. <laughs> 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 what is this? <laughs> don't. I, I don't think we could see that thing if we walked past no a hundred of them. No yeah, way. I don't think we ever would. No I went way. to Belize last summer and we were looking for females of this genus and we only found males at lights. We couldn't even find nymphs or anything in in the wild, they're they're just super hard to see. That's incredible. Got to follow the males. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's. Uh, I think that's like the most interesting thing. Everything else is kind of too. Yeah, small. the movie mimic. <laughs> yeah. I mentioned mimic. That's what I base up. Have oh, you seen yeah. that movie? I did oh, see it, but it's been is... twenty years. Oh, what a classic B-rated film. <laughs> Mr. Funny Shoes or whatever. <laughs> that's terrible. All right, anyways, yeah, keep going. Yeah, so that's, that's the probably the most interesting stuff of my collection right now. I think everything else is too small to... Whoa, whoa, whoa. What about uh, Idolo Mantis Diabolica? Oh, okay. I mean, I have, Come I have, on. I, I'll get, I, Gotta bring my I'll favorite low heat. Bring the heat, low heat. <laughs> <laughs> like, I wonder if he has an adult. I think he said most of the rest of them were immatures. Uh, even an immature devil flower mantis is worth it. Yeah. But the adult is quite amazing. I mean, that thing looks like a dragon. It looks like a dragon. 
in bug form. It does. Like, it does. I mean, it's eat your heart out, Pokemon. <laughs> you know? It also looks like the devil. <laughs> Maybe a devil dragon. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right. All right, as requested. <laughs> Look at that. Ugh, can't go wrong. I have one that's pretty much the exact same size as that right now. Oh, nice. Is it a male or female? Do you know? I believe mine is a female. Okay, yeah, this one's a female, too. Yeah. yeah huge. I have one about that same size, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. What do you know? And I don't, I don't know what sex you one get, is. I haven't, I haven't looked at it in a while. You guys won't believe this, but I got mine from this guy. So, hey. And I got mine from Loki. <laughs> what a weird coincidence. <laughs> it's the circle go. of... Bug life, <laughs> a, bug, a bug collector life. <laughs> like, Everyone's connected. Yeah, <laughs> idolas are just so clumsy, though. <laughs> That's a yeah. They really are. Those are a difficult bug to raise, especially mm -hmm. from uh, like first instar. <laughs> yeah, they get they get worse at walking every molt. It seems like. Yeah. So I just throw in a bunch of like dry grass into their enclosure, and they basically just use that to sit on because. I think they can't walk flat very well. <laughs> so, right, right. Yeah. Well, in about 10 minutes here, or maybe even a, few, a little bit earlier than that, we'll go into Q&A. But real quick, are there any species that you're wanting that you haven't gotten yet that you really want to raise? I know one in particular in my head. That yeah. I uh, well, yeah. Well, how much time do you have? Because I'm, <laughs> I'm interested in raising almost anything. Okay, but... okay, list your top four. <laughs> okay, <laughs> top... Oh, man, that's so hard. Uh, Is your goal okay. to... to experience every single species in the hobby at some point or are you discriminating in terms of which ones you put your time into uh i am limited on time but if i had let's say i had infinite time i would want to keep everything uh, uh -huh. ultimately i want to create a collection where i have every instar of every species from nymph to adult of both sexes oh. Oh, and yes, that, would be that would be like the best museum collection i could like give to anyone because i think with that you could identify almost everything um, That'd be amazing. that you find so plus the book you could release with that <laughs> yeah, I mean. that would be crazy um so top four yeah top four i'd have to go first toxidera bay or i 100 percent that's that's, that's not the one question. i figured um but almost any toxidera i like any toxiderid anything in that family is interesting to me so cat eyes i have cat eyes right now um and they're great but they're not toxidera which is like um because the know, dream of dreams right there. Um, yeah, yeah, dream <laughs> yeah. of dreams. Um, is that the one that looks like it has a little butterfly landed on it? Um, it has like like leafy projections coming off of its abdomen, and it's. Uh, Are they uh, yellow? Oh, that's integrifolia. Yeah, like okay. that's Toxidera integrifolia. That's another okay. species that I do want. Um, that's probably you, you, like type for first. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. Okay. And then I think Metalodicus, any Metalodicus uh, species. So Splendidus, I know, is like the most popular one because it's, it's like the most pretty, I guess. But they're all pretty interesting to me because they're more like cockroaches than mantises, really, like in terms of behavior. So right. if you just take a cockroach and give it predatory four limbs, then wow. you have Metalodicus. <laughs> um, yeah, like they, they mate back to back. They're really cool. Um, their ooths are like... Uh, Ooths for people that don't know is like the egg cases that mantises lay. So Ooth Viki is the plural, um, but they're basically just the egg with very minimal foam. They lay it like between the bark of tree, like inside the tree bark. So it's very like specialized lifestyle. Um, so yeah, those are really cool. And then I think Stenophylla is like the South American dragon mantis. Um, <laughs> yeah, love those. Those would be really cool. And then there's like a bunch of like small species that like that aren't really well known but just are weird that i'd be interested in keeping and haven't had a chance to keep yet so like <clears throat> like mantoida um they're they mimic campanotis ants as nymphs and then they mimic braconid wasps as adults and you, you kind of they're actually pretty common in tropical areas they kind of they move around like a wasp as adults and they have like those bicolored antennae where it's like black and white and then black at the tip again like those braconid wasps have which is really cool um, and they lay eggs in cerambicid holes, which is really interesting. So they're they're like a really weird small group. Um, the ones in Florida do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The ones in Florida too. They're also found in, in, like in, in longhorn beetle holes. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Like like where where the large yeah, the, where the hole in the like bar, the tree or the branches like where oh. the beetle has come out. They like to lay in those holes. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know if it's bark, if it's uh, serambicid specific, but it, I think oh. it's just any hole in the yeah 
in the branch made by that's like, a the most common yeah old tree i guess out there yeah <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah those are those are really have you had uh, the maya the florida ones no i haven't uh, okay. They don't seem to do, uh, Brian uh, Friday has tried to keep them a couple times, but they don't seem to do too well in captivity. They kind of need a lot of space, it seems like, because they're really active. So they kind of want to move all the time. And yeah, well, we got to get some into your hands. <laughs> um, I know, yeah, yeah. exactly. I, I saw some again. in Belize, but like, obviously I couldn't really bring them back. So, <laughs> um, But it was cool, it was cool like the week or so that we had them, because we had like five and like a big net cube with like a bunch of branches that we tossed in there, and we are like, well, they're not dead. Cool. I'll just keep watching them until they die. And then right, like right. either way, we have to put things in alcohol. So it was just, it was just cool having them for that week. So we could just see what, what they're about. Yeah. That's really neat. Yeah. Well, before so, yeah. we go, well, before we go into Q and a, you want to say anything at all? Oh, um, so you, you said you graduated and you, you you're applying to graduate school. Mm -hmm. Um, what, what's some of the research that you, you did back or that you want to do coming up? Um, you talked about it a little bit earlier, but, you know, is there a, is there a favorite group that you want to work with or? Um, I'm probably going to say neotropics just because that's what I'm most familiar with right now. But I'm not opposed to working on any group of mantis, like, in, in another place. Like, I, I'd find them all to be pretty interesting. Um, I do want to like do more biodiversity-esque surveys in India specifically because there's a lot of undescribed species there. And um, I, I know that just from like pictures that wildlife photographers post like around like the, it's just species that aren't described. Like for example, there's a Deripada species, the Dudley mantis that was described like in 2007 from India. And there's no other Deripada species known from India. But I've seen pictures of like two or three others that are just not described, that just haven't been collected by scientists. So. That's just like one example, right? If like if stuff that big is like not being seen, then there's there's bound to be a bunch of other smaller stuff too that's also there. Um, but yeah, and then recently, well, actually just last week, um, I sent my uh, checklist and key to Belizean Mantodia off to peer review. So I'm hoping that goes well <laughs> and it gets published oh, yeah. some, Good luck with sometime that. soon. <laughs> I don't know when when it'll be done, but yeah, in the coming months. In the coming months. Yeah. Well, let, let us know what happens with that. We'd love to For follow sure. up and hear about it. Yeah, we'll do. We'll yeah, do. definitely. We actually are planning a trip ourselves to India next year. Oh, so we'll, uh, we'll nice. have to keep a little uh, little eye out on that. More to come on that. Uh, okay. It's okay. of course everything's up in the air right now with what's going on, but right. uh, that's definitely a plan that we're attempting. So, it's coming. All right. So, let's get this Q and A started. Uh, after that. Stick, stick around because we are going to have a little trivia. If, uh, we definitely will have time. So uh, you can win some stickers and prizes, and uh, we'll all three kind of be asking some questions. So uh, go ahead. If you guys want to ask some questions to Low Heat, uh, go ahead and send some out, and we'll we'll go from there. So we're going to do it for about 10 minutes. So if we missed your questions, I apologize. Yeah, some people asking questions. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> really bad. We'll see. I'm sure some stuff start popping up here in a second. <laughs> So, uh, Toxidera, how's that? How long do you think that's going to take before you get that here in this country? Oh man, it's going to be it's going to be a while, I think. Uh, first person to captive breed them is like a guy in Malaysia, and he did it just last year. So, like, we, he's still learning a lot about them. So, right. it's going to be a while for sure. I follow that guy, right. and in fact, yeah, and that's that's his tagline in his go. bio: yeah. first breeder. Yeah. <laughs> yep. All right. <laughs> yeah. All right. So. Uh, what do you prefer to you use uh, uses as a plural for mantises? Oh, um, well, mantises in and of itself is plural, I guess. So mantises, yeah. <laughs> right, right. And we got uh, Grunt Highbone here, Grant. Where can I get dragon mantis? Uh, the giant ones from, I believe, Thailandish area. Um. You won't really be able to get them anywhere unless you're going on getting them. I think if you're trying to find someone to sell to you, you're only going to get specimens. I think it's like they're just too sensitive. Uh, it's really hard to get anything shipped here and get the permit for it in like a reasonable amount of time. So you'd be better off just going to the place yourself and trying to collect it. But they're found throughout um, East Asia and India. So, yeah. Let us know when you get back, Grant. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> 
in and let us know if you get some. <laughs> All right, can can uh, can mantis eat dead prey? Uh, yeah, they sometimes will scavenge if they're really hungry or if they've been eating something and they get disturbed and they drop it for a second and don't run away. They'll they'll smell it and then pick it back up. So yeah, they will they will scavenge on occasion. Yeah. Here, here's a little trick for everybody who is having problems keeping their house flies alive long enough. <laughs> you you can throw them in the freezer. Yeah, and then uh, feed frozen flies if you're out of living ones. Yeah, that does kind of like a sausage. You drop you know? it in front of a mantis, <laughs> and the mantis will grab it. A mantis popsicle a for a bicycle. <laughs> yeah, a flycycle for a mantis. <laughs> All right, we got, um, let's see, what are some of the most, in oh, uh, Tetrasera says, what are some of the most interesting raptoral claw adaptations you've seen? Oh, that's a good question. It's like a pretty recently um, looked into field of research. Um, so before I think the view of most entomologists were, oh, mantises all have raptoral forelimbs, so they all like hunt the same, or they, you know, they all like strike the same, or like, whatever. Um, I think in the past decade, mostly, as people like have looked closer at mantises, they realize like there is. I mean, certainly, there's like a benefit of like having some like cryptic um, camouflage to having like a different kind of forelimb morphology. But you can with that also comes like the ability to specialize in different kinds of prey. So if you take, for example, a lot of um, mantises in South America that are in the family Thespidae. They've evolved these multiple apical forelimbs on the four tibia. So the four tibia is the segment before their tarsal, their tarsi. So the tarsi is what they walk on. The tibia is that big first segment right after the tarsi, um, and that has a big hook usually on most mantis species. But this family, a lot of the members, they've evolved multiple spines. So if you think about it, it's kind of like a fork. So they'll use it to like spear soft-bodied prey. Um, which is really cool. And I think, Peter, in Arizona, you, like, or maybe someone that you met caught uh, Bistanta Mexicana, that really stick-like mantis, that really thin one. I don't know if you recall that. Oh, is that the one that used to be in uh, Oliganacella was the old one? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 They, those guys also have that spearing for them. So they, oh, really? They'll, no, yeah, they'll spear, they'll spear through soft-bodied prey to catch them. But then that means, you know, like, they can't catch beetles, for example. So, like, these different adaptations have trade-offs and benefits. They're better at catching like flies or small things and cracks that most animals, that most other mantises couldn't get, but then they can get these like big beefy, like grasshoppers or something, you know, something like that. Um, and then even even with this, like the way the mantis like strikes the prey, that can also be different. Um, you see things like Toxidera, which have like these really long forelimbs and they hold them up beside their uh, prothorax. But then most mantises will have their forelimbs under them, they'll just strike forward. But, with Toxidera, the reason why they do that is because if they before they strike, they open their four tibia out, so they have this huge like bear trap almost. And when the butterfly, that because they specialize in butterflies, once the butterfly flies and triggers the spines, they just snap shut, and they're able to enclose the entire wing because they have this huge strike area that normally other mantises wouldn't have. So there's all these like specialized um, adaptations. And that's based that, off of their prey, you said, right? Yeah, yeah, right. Interesting. All right, we got arthropod ambassadors. Can you tell when slash where a species was discovered by the scientific name it was given? Uh, sometimes, yes. So if you have, like, for example, Asia dotis unanensis mm -hmm. is found in Yunnan, China. Um, like, so the ensis tells you that, as a suffix, tells you, like, the, the pre, the, I guess the root of that word is where that place, like, the place that it was discovered. So or the place that it or originates from or something. So yeah, like Asia Dodis unanensis is from Yunnan, China. Um, just as an example, Daropodis indica is from India, um, just as an example, so yeah. All right, well, how about uh, invertebrate dude? Any key tips on breeding slash rearing uh, Coerodotus? Oh, okay, well, the breeding part is still something I have to figure out, I don't know. Um, I've had like, connections and I've had I've known people that have had like successful like matings or like what we thought was successful and then the the uthiki don't hatch um so why that is I don't know um rearing wise they're actually not too terribly difficult um early in stars you can treat them like well, I don't want I don't want to say rombadera because they do need more humidity than that but like they're very aggressive like rombadera are like you don't have any issues feeding they can molt off 
most things, but um, it, generally, it's I think it's better for Quero just to have a bioactive setup because their hood size will be smaller if it's not a constantly high humid humid environment. Um, and they they evolved to specialize in aeroids, uh, family or AC in in the neotropics. So they grow on things like philodendron and anthuriums and stuff like that. So they really, as they get older, like the subadult and pre subadult stage, they sometimes have molting issues where, like, if they don't feel like it's the right, I don't want to say like habit, I guess habitat, like if they don't feel like the environmental conditions are right to molt, they'll just get stuck and won't molt. And part of that is due to like, in the wild, they'll sit on top of the leaf until like 10 minutes before they need to molt. And so if they can't have that like leaf area and like feel, I don't know whether it's like the lighting that's under the leaf or like the texture of the leaf or something like if that individual doesn't feel like it's right, they'll just get stuck and won't molt. So sometimes you'll have to like, like I've had an individual that like was, didn't want to molt and she would have just died on the side of the container just hanging like that. But I had to like move her up and then like five minutes later, she started molting. So like it's a super specialized mantis. And I think oh, picky. you may as well just go the whole way and keep a nice vivarium if you're going to get it because it's it can be really frustrating otherwise. Right. And and these are the, for those that don't know, the very large green mantises yes. with, the, with the giant green shield behind the head. Yeah, they're called the hooded mantises. Yeah. Because I, I was like, yeah. All right, fair, fair. So the key is to uh, hope and pray on those. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. So no end to the wonder. That's a good name, especially when it comes to bugs. No end. Oh, that is a good wonder. question. That is a good no, name. Um, but what sparked your interest about mantids that are about mantis that made you want to collect them? Oh, um, I guess I was, well, I was into insects generally. Um, and then I went to India when I was young and I caught an ant mantis. Um, I didn't know what it was at the time, but I caught that and I was like, oh, I want, I want to know what this bug is. So when I got back home, um, back to the US, I looked it up and then I found that like people would sell mantis nymphs or something. And then um, so I started getting into it more that way. And then because it was just a really cool insect to me, like the way it ate and stuff was just very fascinating to me. I think most people that have kept mantises can agree, like it just never gets old watching them catch prey. <laughs> I think it's just a, <laughs> such a cool thing to see happen. Um, it's true. So it's yeah, it's really entertaining. Um, and yeah, I actually joined Mantid Forum way back when. And so that's kind of how I got <laughs> exotic species. So I have Peter to thank for that partially. Um, and yeah, so since then, it's pretty much just further down the rabbit hole, I guess. <laughs> so so yeah. that Mantis was your gateway into the entire bug hobby? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. And have you ever kept anything besides mantises, just well, in terms of groups, or was it just yeah, mantises I, I kept, from the beginning and ever I since? I kept ladybugs initially before that. Um, I kind of raised them through a life cycle as part of like a science fair project in, I think, kindergarten or first grade. Um, but it wasn't, it was just more like, oh, I wonder like how they, like if I could do it. It wasn't like I was interested in a ladybug necessarily. Um, yeah, and then mantises, I think, were, like, the first insect that I was, like, super, super interested in. Um, it's not that I didn't like other insects. It's just, like, I was like, oh, that's cool. But mantises are like, yeah, that's that's my thing. Like, I really like that. <laughs> so. That is fair. All right, here's one more. Uh, we maybe do have time for a couple more questions. But how uh, Alien and Insects asks, how do you prevent molting problems? Okay. Um, so, yeah, the, you can have several types of molting problems and it kind of depends on the species. So generally the most common one is um, a moisture related molting problem where the mantis will get stuck in the exoskeleton. And uh, to prevent that, you just need to make sure you're more diligent about giving the mantis water because the contrary to popular belief, typically the humidity doesn't matter too much for molting. It's just about the internal water content because if it's not, if they don't have enough water, they can't slip through their old exoskeleton to molt. So the way I do it is I just spray my mantises directly. I know people say you shouldn't do that, but as long as you're not blasting them with water, it doesn't doesn't really, it's not going to like hurt them or anything. Just spray water at them. They'll drink it off their forelimbs or off the ground if they're still thirsty. Um, and yeah, I typically don't have many moisture-related molting problems anymore. Um, the second type is a bit harder to like fix because it can change, it can like change based on the size of the mantis. So you can have a mantis that's molting off. This is a substrate molting problem. So if you have a substrate that like 
you're using like a cloth lid, let's say, for example, um, that's common in most deli cups. Um, a mantis might malt off of it fine as a nymph, but then as it gets older, it doesn't have enough friction on the exoskeleton as it's dangling to hold on, and then it'll fall during the molt. So to prevent that, you need to give it something sturdier to hold on to. So things like, so big mantis species, like I'm sure Peter knows, like Hyrodula, they get really heavy. Um, you're going to need to give them something a bit more sturdy to grip onto than like just the cloth, cloth lid. So I just use like a mesh, a fine mesh, and that, that just works fine because they can dig their tarsal claws into the mesh and, the, and then they don't fall. Um, you and tend then, to use, in terms of mesh, do you tend to use uh, like a cloth mesh or a metal mesh? Oh, um, I use organza. Um, so it's like, it, I know it's not like a mesh. It's like, it's not like a proper mesh, but I mean, it, it works well enough because it's sturdy. I think it's like plastic based, I think, but. That was the it, word I wanted to hear you say for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I only learned that word by way of someone else who learned it from you pretty recently. <laughs> yeah, funny. it's, I, I recommend organza. I think that's my favorite one. Um, yeah. Well, I'm going to combine two questions. I'm going to combine uh, mostly Megan's question and alien and insects again into one. So uh, what is bad for a mantis to eat? And can you feed your mantis hamburger? <laughs> um, <laughs> great questions. <laughs> they are. You know. So, I have fed my mantises hamburger like, <laughs> like 30 years ago when I had some European mantises here locally. And before the Internet existed, I tried feeding them raw hamburger at one point. Really? I really did, <laughs> yes. Yeah, so like the they, they will, they they will eat, the like, raw meat and stuff. That's not, like, a, like, it's not something they won't eat. Like, as much as they are visual predators, they will, you know, they will, like, scavenge something if they smell something that they think might be food. Um, and as far as what's bad for a mantis to eat, I think usually mantises can, like, they can get sick, but it's usually not from toxins. It's usually from um, bacteria or, or something like that or fungi build up in the enclosure or something like that. So they're very, like, they can be susceptible to pathogens like that, but, like, they can actually process toxins pretty well. Um, like, most uh, mantis species can eat, like, pretty toxic butterflies, um, and they can just eat it, no problem. Um, but if they get something that has, like, bad bacteria, like, usually sometimes, like, I know crickets get, like, a bad rep because of that. Um, cause usually pet store crickets are kept in pretty filthy conditions. They can store a lot of pretty harmful bacteria. And when the mantis eats it, it gets sick. Sometimes it dies. So it's just, yeah, better, so that's better. That's still always... the prevailing, that's still the prevailing theory on what causes the brown goo of death is yeah. uh, bacteria and yeah. pet store crickets. Okay. I haven't heard anybody, uh, who has as much of a science base discuss that <laughs> topic in quite a few years. And I've been wondering, thank you. Yeah, I think anyone... it's it's more to do with the conditions though than the cricket itself. Because I've had pet store crickets that I've like kept for like a couple weeks and then just fed like clean food and then they're fine. So I think it's more to do with the conditions that they're in than anything. Great. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, you know, I wonder. Does do you think any scientist out there specifically studies the brown goo of death? Like, is that like a specific I... scientific Do thing? Dr. David Yeager. Used Mr. That term, Yeager. term for Dr. me Yeager. with me specifically. He said, we call the it, brown. I said, I said, what do you guys call it? And he said, we call it the brown goo of death. <laughs> <laughs> wow. The BGOD. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I, I'm going to uh, stop on the questions. We're going to do some quick trivia here. We got about 15 minutes, so we're going to get through as quick as we can. Uh, I'm going to start off with the first question. Uh, there's going to be three winners for this. The first place winner will get three stickers of their choice. Second place gets two, and third place gets one sticker. If we go to a tie, we, we're going to have to do a sudden death. Ooh. Especially when we're talking about mantids. <laughs> sudden death really makes sudden sense. Death. <laughs> sudden death. All right. <laughs> all right. First question, everyone. Get ready. I'm going to make sure that I have, I'm all the way caught up. All right. So what is the Latin name for the devil flower mantis? First person to get it. It gets two points. It and I will say, you. some people might see theirs as above one. I'm going above what I see. And trust me, I'm double checking and looking. So Mad Mantis got that one. If, so I will say, if you think yours is ahead, I'm sorry. I don't see that on my end. I am going by what I see. So that's just how it's going to have to be. 
All right, next question. You, you, do you have some? Did you get some questions by chance? Oh, uh, well, I didn't. I didn't realize it was for the trivia. I was gonna. I had personal questions like for you guys, but. <laughs> oh, oh no, that's fine. Well, we'll we'll do the trivia real quick, and maybe okay. we'll have time for that. Okay. I got a question okay, sure. here. Yeah. Uh, this is a two pointer. How many abdominal segments do male and female mantises have? Ooh. And this is when you look at the underside of the abdomen. This is one of the tricks for sexing mantises. And females and males have different numbers. What are those numbers? Is that one correct? Yeah, Mad Men. Yeah. Yeah. All right, eight and six. Loki, Loki will have to tell you. I can't see this. <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't really read it very well in the numbers. I can, so. I can do a question, actually. I just thought of one. If, uh, All right. Can happen. Uh, how many uh, species of mantises estimated do we currently know? Ooh, I didn't write that one down either. I think you said it earlier. We'll make that so, one point. But yeah, maybe let's we'll see if people are paying attention. <laughs> right, right. That's half the fun. Twenty-five hundred. Two. Ooh, not quite, Val. Um, Aaron's a bit low. Grunt is too high. <laughs> so we'll ballpark it. What What do you think is? Uh, who uh, got, it's who less got... than five thousand. I'll, I'll say that. It's less than five thousand. Less than five thousand. Not not that few. <laughs> no, it's too too high. Uh, Mantis Mars. Okay, close. Higher than fifteen hundred. That's for yeah, sure. Yeah, higher than fifteen hundred. Yeah. <laughs> See, final answer. See, you know, final too, answer. Too high. <laughs> Daniel Mister <laughs> Deadman in the house. <laughs> What about uh, four four thousand? No, too high, too high. Three thousand. No, oh, getting close, getting close now. <laughs> Narrowing it down. <laughs> getting warmer. Uh, not quite, not quite. Da, 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 I know, yeah, but that's a. <laughs> uh... <laughs> too high, too high. We're going to start taking points away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, two. Too 27, high. 27.8? Too high. 32? I mean, I guess you could give it. Mantis Mars was like the closest so far. Mantis Mars? All right, yeah. I'll give it to Mantis Mars. I knew he was going to have the hardest question. Uh, right. right. <laughs> we'll make that two points. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> All right. Uh, my next question. Next question, guys. All right. What was the first Mantis low heat showed in this video? Oh, that's a good question. What was the first Mantis low heat showed in this video? And you have to spell it correctly. <laughs> oh, no. Just I'll, kidding. No, I'll give it to you. You can just, just kidding. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Tip to Sarah's got it. Got it. Next question is two points, kind of follows up on Low Heat's last question. How many mantises does Bug Guide say are in the United States? And I'm curious, Low Heat, if you agree with this number or not. Oh, actually, I actually. Because I think you and I talked it. about this once before. Yeah, let me see what Bug Guide says. The first person that gets within three. I'm going to let him have it in case this goes on again for three minutes. I know. I was going to say, we only got 10 minutes left. So I, I think... Jesse, the answer is... Oh. Okay. All right. Oh, invertebrate dude, Tristan. Oh, yeah. He's a moderator on Bug Guide. <laughs> yeah, he'll still get it. That was two points or three points? He, he probably wrote it down. That's two points. Yeah. All right. Next question. How many eyes does a praying mantis have? How many eyes? I mean, we'll count the compound eyes as one eye, just for the sake of this, so people don't. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, the answer is five. Mm. But I don't know who to give to this on here because there was two two questions on there. You know, what? I'm gonna have to throw this. I for, I didn't realize that uh, we had two. We had two. Uh, 
the first five I see is Mantis Mars. I'll, I'll give a point to Mantis Mars as the first five I see. All right, you're, you're this, go, Peter. This question's going to be a quick, a quick and easy one for the right person. What other insect group used to share the order Dictyoptera with mantises? A good one. And I think some people still consider them to be in the order Dictyoptera. Dictyoptera? Yeah, some places in the world, they still go by that. Some some classrooms with older textbooks, maybe. Was it uh, Blatidia? Yeah. Blatidia? Yeah. yeah. Inver that, Tristan I knew, again. I knew Invertebrate Dude was going to get that one. Tristan again. He's <laughs> catching up. Man. Yeah. Mad Vantis and Tristan are tied. Or first. All right. So, what continent are ghost mantids native to? Ooh, good one. What continent are ghost mantids native to? All right, Mad Mantis, good job. Yep. That was two points. Mad Mantis back in the lead. Another two point question. What, ad what adjective precedes the word four legs in describing the front legs that mantises use oh, this is, these to catch their prey? <laughs> Lohit mentioned this one four times during this. <laughs> I did. <laughs> what did they say? <laughs> Someone said Fresno. <laughs> Fresno. <laughs> Lohit and I know that one. I'm from Sacramento. Lohit's down in UC Davis. So yeah. <laughs> we all know Fresno. <laughs> Fresno four legs. <laughs> Fresno four legs. <laughs> yeah. I think Val got that one. Raptorial. Tibia? Raptorial. I think. Oh, right. No, who got it? Who got it? Tetraceras. Tetraceras. All righty. I didn't, I don't, why do I not see? I don't even see Tetraceras on here. Oh, really? It's like right below Fresno on mine. Maybe, I don't know. Oh, that's crazy. Okay, I'll give that to Tetraceras. Tetra Sarah's got two points. All right. All right. This is a three point question. This is, uh, uh, this is, do you have a three point question too? I do. My okay, last good. question. Good. Great. Okay. This is my last question as well. So in 2013, a new species of mantis was discovered erecting a new genus Vespa Mantoida. What does this mantis mimic? This is a good one. <laughs> hey, these are good questions. <laughs> Have you heard of this genus? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, yeah. They're awesome. You can get it from the name. Right. Yeah. Yep. Tetraceras. Wasp. All right. That was three. Pro I think that might have just. Last question right here. Also a three-pointer. What U.S. mantis species reproduces parthenogenetically? Males are not known to exist answer must be spelled correctly the scientific name oh this is good <laughs> oh my God. you guys can have the good questions <laughs> hey you know try hard <laughs> you go hard or go home low heat you know it's true, I mean, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to bug trivia <laughs> yeah always always go hard what's the what is the answer to that uh, oh, oh, he, will you watch for the answer on that yeah, one yeah, I'll i can't watch, see I'll the watch. screen from back here we got the genus. We need genus and species because there's multiple species in that genus. Not within the United States, right? Yeah, not within the United States. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mantis I Mars. Just got if it. They split Mantis it. Mars. Yeah. Oh, Mantis Mars. Oh, yeah. Right. Frenaria borealis is the parthenogenic species <clears throat> in the U.S. And there are grass. Oh, right. Grass well, like. since uh, we only have five minutes. I'm going to, well, okay, we're going to do one question for sudden death. This is between Mad Mantis and Tetraceras. So, Lohit, you ask the question. Whoever answers first between those two gets oh, it. Shoot. Okay. Um, <laughs> shoot. <laughs> this is a funny one. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, actually, no, I'll, I'll, I'll pick one from the live stream. Okay. So, what did I say was my favorite genus of mantises? Sudden death. 
What is Lohit's favorite genus of mantis? All right, Val got it. <laughs> Val, all right. All right, uh, that means... Yeah, I'm, I'm just a sucker for Toxidera, man. They're so cool. <laughs> that means that... Uh, Val, uh, shoot me a shoot me a message, Val, with what three stickers you want. Uh, it doesn't matter which one they are. You can choose any three, or I can send you three at random, whatever works for you. Just shoot me a message. And Mad Mantis, shoot me a message and give me uh, two stickers that you want. And Mantis Mars, message me and send me what sticker you want. Also, send me your addresses as well. I need your addresses. If I don't hear from you, I'll try to see. If, I'll try to remember to message you myself. All right. Well, we have four minutes. What questions did you want to ask us, Lohit? Oh, I was gonna ask you guys. Like, um, I know, I know, we chatted before, Jesse. Like, what got you into, um, like doing what you do? Um, but Peter, what did, what got you into doing what you do? <laughs> um. Well, I've always been interested in bugs. Um, ever since I was a little kid. And I put my website up shortly after the internet came up. There weren't a lot of bug websites back then in the 90s. And I had found some stick insects at local pet stores, uh, four species, in fact, here in the Portland area. And I was just checking them out online, you know, trying to learn some information about them. And there were a few stick insect websites out there in the, on the early internet. And I just decided to put one up. And... Uh, when I put one up, I started interacting with lots and lots more people around the world about insects. And it just kind of grew from there. My own curiosity turned into even more curiosity. And I started making friends with people around the world and trading specimens back and forth. And uh, eventually I had acquired a bunch of bugs that uh, people would ask me to trade for, but they didn't have anything that I wanted anymore. and so it turned into a business for that reason. And it's pretty much just that okay. simple. Yeah. And, now, <laughs> and I just kept going. And, you know, the, the more I do and the more people I interact with, the more I seem to get involved with, like this here with Jesse today. And hence, yeah. Bugs in Cyberspace was born. <laughs> <laughs> the mighty being. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that was fun. Uh, it looks like we only have about a minute left. So I will say uh, I'll close this out. Lohit, thank you so much for joining us for today, sure. man. Thank you for having that was me. awesome. I love seeing all the different species. I'm sure everyone else enjoyed it as well. Uh, we'll have sure. to do this again sometime, I feel like. Uh, stay tuned. Peter and I will be doing another live, possibly this next Sunday on the 13th, featuring some lemurs. So that'll oh, be pretty interesting. Cool. Yeah. We'll have lemurs on the show and everything. And then after that, we're going to be uh, working with uh, my friend Frank. We're going to go over some dragonflies the following Saturday. So it'll be pretty cool. Oh, can't wait for that one. Love dragonflies. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you very much again. Thanks again, Logan. All right. Have a good Great Saturday, stuff, guys. Logan.